Hello everybody, welcome back to the Pink and uh, Norwich City podcast. We're in a very special location. We're in the Lion and Castle here at Carrow Road. You will recognise this man to my left, uh, Darren Eady, Adam Harvey, le- maybe less so, but I don't know, you're just as influential on, on the right. Um, this is a, a really brilliant space. It's the first time we've been in here. This is, um, we're going to give a bit, bit of background on it. Um, this is the space which has replaced the, the Russell Allison Lounge inside Carrow Road. So it's going to be available for supporters in the Lower Barclay to use pre-game. There may also be some occasions where the away fans are in here as well. It's been inspired um, by a, a pub at Brighton. Delia Smith has, has played a real influential role in revamping this space. And um, it's uh, we're here today for the official unveiling, which uh, Darren Eady is, is going to be a key part of. So just talk to us a little bit about this. We're sat behind what is a really impressive mural, which I think along come Norwich and David Nasher, who did the Daniel Farker um, one that I'm sure you saw at the Fat Cat and Canary, which has been in the news a little bit this week. Um, this is a really in- impressive space, isn't it, Darren? It is, yeah. I mean, the, the, the mural is great, and actually, what I didn't realise until I read the board was actually these are all instances that have happened at this end of the stadium in the Barclay Stand. So, some important moments in, in Norwich City's history, but, but a great space to be in before the game. Um, and I think it's nice for the club to kind of tip their hat at the Barclay end, which seems to have what you'd call the more hardcore fans in it, I guess. You know, so it's nice for them to have a really nice environment to come in, sort of uh, pre-match. But then, of course, it's open to everybody else in the stadium after the match as well. So, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great place to be, and um, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to getting in here because it wasn't very nice before. No, I think I think it was just like a plain grey concourse. And yeah. now, I mean, you obviously got this this wonderful artwork behind us. There's some kind of self-serving um, beer and, and drink. Um, places up there, there's a, there's a full bar in front of us, loads of tables and chairs, it's a really revamped modern space is the best way that, that I can describe it. I mean we've got some great images which maybe won't work if you listen to all the so I'll talk you through it, we've got Temi Puki's goal um, against, what was, that was uh, the Millwall. Millwall game, that's it, we've got Houlihan, Huckabee, Holt, Gunn, Simeon Jackson against Derby, that goal, Darren you have made, you I have, have made, made the wall the... indirectly, yeah, behind Gossie there was a, was a young 18 year old skinny lad who uh, would have scored if Chris Sutton didn't flick it onto Gossie, I was then about to head it in, <laughs> but Gossie put it in instead, so yeah, I mean, you know, I've made the wall indirectly, but I'm, I'm happy enough with that. Well, that's the main thing, you're on it, you're on it. Um, Adam, let's, let's come to you, I mean, this is the first time we've come in here, we walked in here about 15 minutes ago, just give us your, your first impressions of it, because I'm sure, like me, you've been in, in the Russell Allison Lounge and it was a, a grey con course it was um, quite bare maybe a little bit old-fashioned as well this is this is something else in terms of how they've revamped it yeah you can already feel there's kind of a sociable element to it all the tables lots of people can come in here pre-game you know share their thoughts with fellow fans and probably feel more sort of part of a community where you know previously you'd come down here and it would just be a lot of people standing in clumps and it was difficult maybe to to get through or or order at the bar so this certainly feels like a a much more nicer space to well sit for for fans and hopefully obviously after the games they'll come in here and enjoy sort of a a post-match pint rather than maybe go to a a different pub further down the road so uh, overall really impressed with the outlook of it. Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing that caught me out, I mean, I've driven past it a few times it's been working and I didn't realise it was as big as it, as it is, is, is maybe the, the best way to say it. It's, re- it's, it's a really long space. I can imagine you can you can see hundreds of people in here. I mean, at this moment in time, it is just going to be match days, but I think there, there are plans to open it um, in the future for events and, and, and for other occasions. So that's, that's going to be uh, really good as well. So it's really nice to be here and it's uh, really nice to have Darren with us as well. So I guess the, the first question for you, Darren, is how are you? How are things? How's your, how's your summer been? Have you been able to switch? off from, from football at all? Not really, no. As, as some people may know, I manage a team called Leyston with my my, uh, my best mate Chris Wigger um, and we've had a difficult uh, pre-season in the sense that we had a really good season last season, finished third, potentially could have gone up which would, would then put us in the same league as Kings, Kings Lynn, didn't quite manage that but on the back of a good season at a club our size. We lost our five attacking players in one foul swoop, um, which is 85 goals and about 30 assists. So we've had a massive rebuild. Well, so it? It, it is. So <laughs> it's been a difficult summer in terms of recruitment, but we've been really pleased with the work we've done. Um, a few boys that, uh, that, that I'm sure some Norwich fans will know as well. Spencer Keller, who was a younger lad here, we've, we've brought in now. Uh, Ross Crane, who we've got from Ipswich Town, if I can say that in here, who's he's been great for us. And uh, we're just about to sign Jamal Lozza as well, who used to be at Norwich as well. So um, we've got the Jarvis boys who play for us, who Norwich fans will know well. Um, yeah, so it's been it's been a, it's been a summer of um, literally trying to find our feet to, to get around and get the players we want in to be able to compete again next season. Because after such a successful season, you don't want it to be a one-off as managers. You know, you want to be able to do that every year. 
How much are you enjoying management? It's uh, obviously at a non-league level. Is, is, has it been an eye-opening experience for you? How have, how have you found it? Yes, yeah, a breath of fresh air. I, I love it. It's, um, look, I do it with my best mate, which, which helps. I think we have, we have a great time doing it together, um, which gives me the freedom to be able to come and host my ambassadorial duties at Norwich during the, the match days and, and other parts of that. So, um, yeah, I, I loved it. It's dealing with good players. You know, the level we're at as well, as I say, there's ex-pros playing for us. Um, We've also got young lads that have sort of come out of academies. They're still hungry to achieve, and that's why we lost five of our lads because they've gone back into the game and, and pushing up the pyramid. So um, it's great that as much as we had a good season, we didn't get any silverware or promotion from it. Um, I take it as a massive, well, me and myself and Chris both take it as a massive plus and a pat on the back that we've managed to progress these players' careers. Um, that's as much as a win to us as, as winning the league. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Adam, we've, we've just come back from, uh, and when I say just come back, I mean pretty much just come back from, from Holland, um, covering Norwich City against Alkmaar's friendly. I mean, people will have been able to see the vlog and various bits of coverage that we did around that, but just talk to us about yesterday because it was, uh, it was long, and even as I said, I can feel my eyes drooping. I mean, we won't name the airline, but a certain orange airline made life very difficult for us. Yeah, we arrived to the airport. I think our flight was a 7.35, so we were supposed to be back in the UK at, well, 7.35, basically, you know, given the, the time difference. And we arrived to the airport, all looks like it's on time. Then we see it changes to half eight, you know, departure. We're thinking, OK, that, that's manageable, even though our, our last train was already be missed by that point. So we thought, here we go, it's going to be a bus trip back to Norwich. Then gradually it got later and later and later to the point it was then quarter past 11. Oh no, sorry, quarter past 10 um, in, uh, in Holland. And we were still sat looking at the plane while they were boarding it. And uh, yeah, then we got back to, to Stansted at, what was it, about, uh, about 11 o'clock, wasn't it? And uh, got some food. We're going to get on the one o'clock National Express bus back to Norwich. And I got on my phone and it says sold out. And at that point, we just thought we could have a night in Stansted Airport, which didn't exactly look very appealing. Uh, Paddy was looking at the trains. 5.37 was the first train back to Norwich this morning. So we thought we could have a night in the airport, um, but I think we sort of clumped together and decided we need to get home. Uh, it's been a long enough day as it is. So a taxi, a very nice taxi driver, drove us all the way back to Norwich. And uh, I think I got in my door this morning at about quarter past three. Um, so... You know, running on coffee a little bit today, but um, yeah, if I'm waffling, that'll be why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so hopefully, you know, as Darren speaks, we're not drifting off, but we, we should be all right, hopefully. Um, Darren, what, what have you made of, of Norwich City's pre-season so far? I don't know how much of it you've, you've seen yeah. first and foremost, but there's, 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 there's obviously been, I don't know, maybe fans concerned about the attacking aspects, but defensively they've, they've looked a lot better, I think, a lot, more, a lot more resilient. What have been your thoughts on it? So I think so, yeah. I think one of the criticisms myself and, and many others would have aimed at Norwich last season was that, that resilience in the Championship, um, having that, that kind of bite and a little bit of power in there. And, and I think we lacked that. There's a little bit of inexperience, uh, a little bit lightweight, um, but the players they've brought in have certainly added that to it. But, you know, if you start stopping them at the other end, you've got to make sure you start scoring goals as well. And, and you know, how do you replace someone like Timo Buki? He's a, he's a massive loss for Norwich City in terms of his goal scoring. Um, but then it gives the opportunity for someone else to step up. And Ashley Barnes has been there and done it at the, at the highest level. Um, and I think if you get the right type of players around him and, and clicking together, I think we'll be OK. The one thing I, I have to say is this is going to be a much tougher championship this year than it was last season. You know, and we, we fell away and finished 13th, I think it was, last season. Um, but with the likes of Leeds, Leicester, Southampton, all going to be strong coming down. And then you've obviously got the you know the teams that were pretty strong in the Championship last year. You know the Middlesbroughs, the Blackburns, the Millwalls, all going to be up there again. The Coventrys. So it's going to be a tough one. It is going to be a real tough one. But I'm always optimistic going into a, a, a season. I'd never judge any players until they step out on the grass and, and see their performances. I've made the mistake of doing that before, and I think we can get carried away with doing that if we'd have. Uh, judged Harry Kane on his performance <laughs> in Norwich City, we would have probably put him in the bin. Um, so, you know, things can click. You know, you, you looked at, as I said before, you look at Timo Puki when we signed him, free transfer, you wouldn't have no expectations and then look at what he does. So, no, I'm always optimistic and, um, yeah, let's, let's wait and see where we are after sort of a dozen so games into the season. Are you a fan of pre-season as a player? It seems to be split. You either find players who really loved it or really hated it. Hated it. I mean, back in the day, it was probably a little bit different back in the day as well. I mean, we were, we were sort of pushed to the extremes. As much as the lads are now, they're all monitored, but we were, it was around the lakes and stuff like that. So, um, I, don't, I don't miss the pre-season, but I miss being around the lads and, and looking forward to the season again and seeing the fixtures come out, as, as the supporters do. You know, the players do that as well. There'll be certain fixtures to be picking out, particularly to Ipswich games. Um, and, and as much as, you know, 
we've been betting them for the last 15 years or whatever it's been. Um, it's great to see them back and, uh, you know, hopefully a, a guaranteed six points next season. But I say that with trepidation because I, I do honestly believe, you know, that there'll be a good side next year. There'll be a right up and in and around it so it's going to be some exciting games next year particularly the derbies yeah and especially again not being disrespectful to them but the, the last two derbies that we had were so uncompetitive really, particularly the one at Carrow Road which ended 3-0 Norwich was so dominant it will be nice to see I guess that edge return to them won't it? it so I'd well maybe maybe, maybe it, honest, so, so would yeah. I but you know I guess it's, uh, it depends what you look for in a, in a derby I suppose Adam um, Alkmaar that, that sort of test really high calibre of opponent and I think we, we recognised that what, what did you make of how Norwich City stood up to it because it was a, a really competitive first half I think the second half descended a bit into pre-season games where both teams are making loads of substitutions but um, what did you make of the trip first and foremost but, but also the performance from Norwich yeah, it was, it was a long trip. Uh, it feels like we were sort of travelling for 48 hours with just sort of some sleep and a game in between. But in terms of the actual game, yeah, it was a uh, first half particularly. I was quite impressed with Norwich's overall performance, certainly one from a defensive standpoint, which had kind of been something I'd praised on the last podcast. I thought they were very good against Kaiserslautern and Darmstadt from a sort of defensive structure point. Um, but actually, I felt they were a little bit more creative in that first half against Alkmaar as well. Of course, got the early goal through Ashley Barnes. And from that moment on, it sort of felt like, you know, the squad maybe kicked on a bit certainly you know the likes of Johnny Rowe were starting to get into pockets of space where they can create opportunities for you know Sergeant and Barnes um, second half maybe a little bit more disjointed but I think that probably came down to the you know the substitutions that were made lots of substitutions of course I think it was about seven at one point so that's probably come to, you know a little bit more uh, expected probably um, but I think yeah certainly in terms of progress I feel like there was a lot more progress made in that game and of course Alkmaar were in the conference league semi-finals so you know they're certainly a squad with you know lots of quality and Norwich match them so certainly yeah feeling more positive after that trip than probably I was the Germany trips where you know I maybe still had a few reservations about certain you know certainly creative uh, maybe they needed some more players in in those areas but yeah overall feeling more positive heading into you know off to Austria on Monday for the game on Tuesday against Toulouse. Yeah it was, was that do you think how you expect Norwich City to play I think we there's been a lot of emphasis in the last 12 months on style and, and playing philosophy and whatnot but it felt like that was kind of the purest form of maybe what David Wagner wants to do, suck a team in, soak up pressure and hit them on the break. And maybe that's why, again, we, we spoke about it on the last podcast, but maybe that's where this Norwich team looks like it's at its best, when it can play in transition, when it's got spaces to run into. Yeah, certainly from a sort of counter, counter-attacking counter perspective, I thought Norwich were, that's probably the best performance we've seen uh, in pre-season. You know, they were comfortable to let Alkmaar have the possession and to be fair they didn't really create anything from it and, and Norwich actually on the counter were, were quite dangerous at certain points I thought Josh Sargent and Ashley Barnes you can already see there's a really good relationship between those two which hopefully if both of them can keep fit that could be something that's quite fruitful in the championship because I thought Sargent certainly sort of in the first half of last season in the championship can prove that he can score goals at this level and Ashley Barnes with a little bit of experience at this level and in the Premier League can uh, hopefully sort of that could rub off a little bit on Josh Sargent and we'll maybe start to see a man who could be a 20 plus a season goal scorer for, for the club um, yeah I still want to see maybe a couple more players brought in in sort of those winger areas where maybe there's a little bit of you know I don't know maybe lack of quality is maybe a little bit but sort of judgment that's maybe been sort of angled at certain individuals but um, yeah certainly certainly with, well, with the Boer signs injury as well I uh, certainly think that that's an area that the club could maybe do with doing a little bit of business but um, yeah I feel like you can sort of see the system now and if fans can get on board with it and David Wagner can hopefully you know press that onto the players sort of in these last two games in pre-season then yeah it could work and we could have a, an exciting season ahead. Yeah that, that aligned with a few more additions definitely I mean Darren you, you will know much of the debate this pre-season so far has been about creativity it's been mm -hmm. about the those wide areas. Um, what, what do you make? I know John Rowe, for example, a player that, that you worked with in, in the past. Um, do you feel Norwich have enough in those areas at the moment? Would you like to see them add a, a, another one or two? I would like to see some more additions. I, I think the lads that have been brought in previously, previous years in certain windows haven't done enough. Um, but what they have got now in hindsight is the years underneath their belt in terms of the championship to understand it. So, they, you know, they'd be given the opportunity. But, you know, all, all good teams generally successfully are built on good defences. And, and Norwich seem like they are shoring up at the back. But one thing Norwich City's always had is creative players. You know, we've been blessed over the years, I think, in terms of creativity we've had, and particularly in wide men. Um, and we don't seem to have that at the moment. That's not for the want of trying. It's just the signings they've made haven't quite worked out as, as we hoped they would. So... Yeah, I would expect to see perhaps one more, two more additions before the season starts, um, but that could depend on some outs first. Um, it's going to be a tough season, I think. 
unless it clicks from the players they've already got, I think you know it's going to be a tough season for Norwich. But they have added that experience, which is something they majorly lacked last season. But whether those players they've brought in have still got the legs and the quality to be able to do it at this level, because the championship is, is as we know, is, is is hard week in week out. You know, two games a week, it's difficult. So, um, but as I said, you know, the lads who or in those attacking areas. It's, it's a fresh slate from the start of the season. They've had the benefit of a season in the Championship to understand it. A lot of them came in when we were in the Premier League. And, and to then drop down and understand the Championship, which plays completely different, is, is a learning curve. So they've got that benefit now. Um, so I'd, I'd be interested to see how they produce. Come, look, I, don't I don't take too much out of pre-season friendlies. It's all about fitness and, and lads getting to know each other's games. And with it, so many new additions, I think it's important to get that understanding between those players um, but yeah creativity is something that was lacking and has been lacking um, but we've got enough players in those areas you know we're not short of those attacking players just they haven't produced it so we just hope they can yeah and, and, and John Rowe is someone who, who has a real opportunity this season doesn't he given what you know we've spoken about and the issues in that area is the players Kieran Dow for example departing he missed large chunks of pretty much all of last season through, through injury he's the type of player that maybe can provide that but it's a lot of pressure to put on his shoulders at, yeah. at what is still a young age yeah. and it's really difficult to come in as a youngster to come into a team that's struggling as Norwich did last season it's, it's a difficult environment to come into you know, I, I had the benefit of coming into a team that was playing in Europe and beating Bayern Munich that makes things a lot easier as a youngster to be able to slip in and, and kind of find your feet when you're doing well uh, it's much more difficult when a team's struggling because those players who are struggling you become a little bit more selfish you're kind of concentrating on your own game rather than helping those around you um, so it's just you know it's, it's just survival essentially so it's for him to have had that experience now hopefully when the team is progressing and doing well it'd be much more easier for him to to show what he can do because he's learned that the horrible side now you know one thing I always say to people is you know unless you play for one of the top two or three teams in the Premier League or in any of the clubs in, in the top of the, their tables, in, in, you know, whether it's the Championship or League One or League Two, you, you'll generally lose more games than you win or you certainly lose as many as you win. So you have to get used to losing. Um, you know, those players have had that benefit of, of feeling that now and feeling what it's like. So they should have that hunger to turn things around again. And it's a fresh slate. You, know, you walk out the first game of the season out on this pitch, the fans will be fully behind them. But then it's down to results again. You go five or six without without getting two decent results, all of a sudden the fans will rightly start again. But um, you know, Norwich fans will always be fully behind you at the start of the season. Yeah, you, you mentioned when you came in as a, a young player and, and maybe the dressing room that you walked into. I guess last year and maybe the, mm. the year before that, have you felt that maybe there's be, it's been a tough dressing room to walk into in terms of maybe not having those leaders or, or personalities within it? We, we've yeah. seen, obviously, the business the club have done this summer. Shane Duffy, mm. Ashley Barnes, Jack Stacey, I guess you'd put in that category as well. It feels maybe like a better environment for a young player to go mm. into with the hope of succeeding now than maybe it was six or, or maybe even three or four yeah. months ago. Yeah, for two reasons. Culturally, I think if, you know, you've brought some British players in that understand the leagues and know how it's, how it's, how it's done in, in, these, in these leagues. Um, but also we had a lot of international lads coming in who were youngsters, which yeah. is difficult enough as it is. So to try and mix them in with the group we already had here and the ones we had here previously have probably only been here a season or so themselves. So it's very difficult to build that foundations on that kind of transient turnover of players. So, so I think what we need is a bit of stability, you know, players on contracts that are going to be here for a bit longer are those kind of personalities that can welcome those youngsters in to be part of, you know, because this is my, my concern against Ipswich is, is the fact that, you know, does anybody who in our team understand the yeah. East Anglian derby? You know, who have we got who's played in it before? Not many. They would have played in other derbies, but particularly if, if now we've got the British contingent have come in, a few more of those, they'll understand it more. Um, whereas last season, you know, if, if it should have been in this division, we'd have had probably no one that's ever experienced it or even knows about it. So you have to feel it. You have to be part of it. You have to be part of the community. And that takes a couple of years to be able to build that, to feel that hunger for the club to play in the local derby. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited by it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm weirdly excited by playing Ipswich, but that is, I think there's a concern as much as excitement. Yeah, and I think you, that's probably the common uh, feeling amongst, amongst Norwich fans at the moment. And Adam, it's interesting because we've spoken so much about creativity on this podcast. I know Norwich fans have spoken about it as well. John Rowe feels like maybe, and we've just we put Poeta in this bracket as, as well, but maybe without the output. But John Rowe in particular, I think David Wagner said this after the game in midweek, feels like he's made strides in this pre-season as well after what, what was a really prolonged period on, on, on the treatment table. Yeah, of course, broke onto the scene in the Premier League when, in a side that was struggling and he was maybe sort of one of the bright sparks in what was a pretty you know grim demise towards the end of that campaign. And I think a lot of fans probably hoped last season would be his year, maybe be in and around the squad, you know, sort of... Maybe 
maybe a bench player, sort of someone who could learn from the likes of Ono Hernandez. Of course, that didn't pan out that way for him with, with injuries. So it feels like maybe it's a fresh slate for him and he's had the full pre-season and he's playing regularly and, you know, actually looking quite dangerous. You know, he's got, he's got a bit of pace about him, which is probably something that uh, a lot of players you know, sort of previously last season maybe didn't have the likes of Kieran Dowell. So certainly feel for David Wagner's system he's a player that could suit it to a T really and um, yeah I think he's probably a player that will be in David Wagner's thoughts for that opening game against Hull and you know he's probably going to be playing with a little bit of freedom there's probably a little bit less pressure on this Norwich City side this season as well of course last year there was an expectation that they would probably be fighting you know for the top two or at least the top six where this season I think probably fans expectations and also just championship fans in general probably bracket Norwich as more of a side that will be probably in the mid-table sort of area so he's on Really got the opportunity now to, to stamp his mark on this squad and hopefully propel them higher up the table and you know they can be competing at the top end at the end of this season. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a, an interesting one because it feels like he's been around for quite a while. He hasn't played many, he's yet to start a game for Norwich City as well. What's, what's he like, Darren, in terms of, of character? How much will he be relishing this, this opportunity that, that's ahead of him this season potentially? He's hungry. I mean, as I say, I worked with him as a, as a youngster and um, without trying to trying to use the right words for it he's horrible at times he was horrible when he was a kid you know he did things wrong at the school he was in and he was he had a he just had something about him and I mean that in the nicest sense you know he's An got edge. yeah he has absolutely got that and um, I think that's something that Norwich has, has lacked um, and he but he's got that but I think as a young lad coming in you're always going to have a little bit of you're holding that back a little bit but now the involvement he has had for so such a long period of time he will now feel like he's virtually, you know, he is actually a proper part of that squad. You know, he's he's up for running as a starting place than anybody else is. So I expect big things from him, but but it is still a massive learning curve. The, the only thing he hasn't had to do, as I said before, is he's not had the ability to learn off those players around him. You know, when I came into that squad, I had great players to learn off and, and understand and make my game improve quite quickly. Because other players were struggling around him, he didn't have that. So he's got to be single-minded in his own ability, believe in himself, which he's got. I mean, he's full, he's full of self-confidence. Um, and just go out there and smash it because whatever happens, you know, if he has a good season and Norwich don't, he moves on. If, if he has a good season, Norwich have a good season, then they move on together. So, look, I, I'm, it's one of the seasons I didn't expect. I don't think any of us expected Norwich to when they signed Wendy Apuki the year we got up the first time out of the Championship into the Premier League. Nobody expected that to happen. You know, we, we were talking like languishing mid-table yeah. in the Championship. Yeah. And they surprised everybody. So, so I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that happen again. But I, I do think that's going to take. Um, certainly more creativity um, and you know when, when we had those teams you, we would have at least half a dozen dozen chances in a game really good chances and I think we, we limited last year we didn't see a great deal of chances and that was the problem um, but as I say it's a clean slate players have got an opportunity to prove themselves again yeah in injuries are horrible he spent the, the whole of last year out injured can it can it benefit him if, if, if that's all right especially in terms of his mindset and to have experienced something like that at a young age to have that setback like you say that hunger will have only amplified within him won't it so is there a possibility that actually the experience that he's been through throughout the last 12 months even though horrible you know I don't need to talk to you about about how how tough injuries are but can they can they help him in terms of his of him as a player and his yeah. development more widely it gives you a resilience um, to understand that you're not just going to get in everything's going to go well for you um, I think when he first came back from his injury he looked a bit tentative uh, which is quite natural when you've had a, a long term injury um, but it can it, it can go on but it, but it also then takes you I mean, almost a dozen at least games 90 minutes to, to get back to your best so he hasn't had the opportunity to do that either you know it's, it's difficult when you sort of flit in and out the under 23s and play a few games in there it's not like playing first team football so he's not had the benefit of that either so to get a good pre-season pre -season under his belt playing good minutes within that he should hit the ground running you know he's got every opportunity now to start this season at his peak and then people will judge him on what he produces within the first you know, sit half a dozen to a dozen games. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how he gets on. Actually, um, Adam, it's it, it's it's it was an interesting game against Altmar. Ashley Barnes, we, we saw again um, coming in, and there was a, a, a booking for descent around 42 minutes. But that type of edge that Darren spoke about with, with John Rowe, I think it's something that a lot of people identified as the Norwich team more widely lacking. Um, he feels like someone who's going to fill that gap, doesn't he, Ashley Barnes? And, and four for pre-season now, which I know doesn't necessarily mean a lot, but 
to get him scoring goals in this side pretty early on is, is a positive. Yeah, his character is absolutely what you want in the championship when you go into places like Stoke on a Tuesday night and it's pretty grim and you just need that player with a little bit of experience, a little bit of nous, you know, who, who knows the championship, knows what it's about and is willing to sort of bring the team over the line in difficult moments. And Grant Holt was probably that kind of figure for Norwich City and I don't really feel like they probably had a replacement. Of course, they had experience in the side last year, Kenny McLean, Grant Hanley, Ben Gibson, a lot of those suffered injuries towards the end of the last campaign and I think we saw that lack of leadership certainly in those last 10 games when things were really, really difficult and you had the likes of Liam Gibbs in that squad who maybe just needs that character in the squad to sort of pull him up and you know almost give him that sort of edge as well and Ashley Barnes already feels like that. He, you know, he led the line of a, a Burnley side that was one of the best to ever play in the championship and, and Norwich have picked him up on a free and that experience, you know, you can't replicate that with any other player you bring in from anywhere other than if they played in this league for plenty of seasons and Ashley Barnes has obviously done that. So excited to see what he can bring and as you've already said, you know, the fight he's shown in pre-season is, is something that I haven't really seen from many Norwich players in the past, certainly, you know, in a, in a pre-season you know, sort of moment. So, uh, and also we spoke to him at the forum the other week and I don't know, I just sort of came out of that and felt this is a guy who I can. You know, I think the fans are really warm to and, you know, in those derby games as well when, you know, you just want that someone to be a cult hero. He, he's got that about him. Obviously done it at Burnley, scoring against Blackburn and he's absolutely loved up there for those reasons. So fingers crossed uh, at Portman Road on the 16th of December, Ashley Barnes can stick the ball in the back of the net in the 90th minute and uh, he'll have his uh, photo on this wall as well, hopefully. Yeah, that would, that would be nice. I mean, he, he feels like a sort of player that... that uh, again, maybe maybe a bit of a throwback, Ashley Barnes, isn't he? Um, and for all of the reasons that we spoke about there, feels like someone who will help this Norwich City side in terms of mentality and in terms of the mental aspects as much as he will on the pitch. Yeah, well, I think the last, if you look at the last two promotions Norwich have got, they've played a very different style of football with, with yeah. Timo Puki, someone who's going to play on the shoulder with a Buendia just in behind. What you've got now is almost going back to that time before when Paul Lambert was here where you've got a leader of the line and even back further than that with Ewan Roberts you know those type of centre forwards where he will be in the 18 yard box you get the ball into him he will be and you've seen that in pre-season already he's picking up pieces he's the one you know how many times I sat down entertaining and hosting here this se uh, last season down in the river end and the balls are dropping in the box and there's no one in there and you're thinking you just need someone to tap it in and he is that type of player so as long as it's almost a Norwich are changing their DNA in, in a way um, in the way they play their football. They, they need to get the ball into the box. And you've seen that in pre-season again. I think they're, they're, they're looking to get the ball into the box a bit quicker. The, I think the, the build-up play has been probably a bit more, you know, it's, we've always known before, Norwich like to have 20, 25 passes to slide yeah, one in to get to the ball. Yeah. It has, and that's not, that's not been derogatory. It's a way of winning football matches and playing to the system and the players you've got. And I think it takes a period of time for the fans to understand that. Well, that, was, for, that was going to be what I was going to ask you. Is there, is there going to be... a not adaptation but certainly maybe a bit more of an understanding that there is this shift because it's gone from what Daniel Wagner wanted to do and David Wagner is willing to go a bit more direct and mix up the styles and have players like Ashley Barnes on his side which maybe Daniel Wagner maybe would have maybe he, did, he wouldn't have but certainly in, in that style of play point it feels like something that maybe fans are going to have to come to a bit more of an understanding about Absolutely and the one thing I've always said is when Norwich have got into the Premier League previously they couldn't play, change the way they played. They could only play that, that nice football. And the problem is when you go to the Premier League, they're all better than you at it. Yeah. So you couldn't do that. So you have to find different ways to win football matches. And that was about being ugly and horrible sometimes. Like, you know, I don't mean that in a derogatory term in the sense like, you look at Brentford when they beat Arsenal first game of the season a couple of seasons ago. They just bashed them about and they were quick and they were strong and they were pacey. And that's how you win games in the Premier League when you've just gone up. You know, I, I look at Luton going up this season. Luton aren't going to go there and try and play football around them. They're going to go and get stuck into tackles. They're going to fly things up early, push forward, play off pieces, and hopefully score goals that way. And that, to me, when you just get into the Premier League, is the way to try and stay there. And we haven't done that. We've tried to continue the way we play with players that aren't as good that are already there. So inevitably you come back down, which is brilliant in the Championship because it's lovely football. But if you want to be competitive in the Championship and in the Premier League, I think a different style of play is needed. Yeah, very much so. Um, Adam, let's let's talk um, very briefly about Bali Mumba. I think by the time this may this have gone out, he may well have completed a move to Plymouth, but he's certainly in, in talks for a permanent return there. Quite a split reaction. Well, maybe not even a split reaction. It's, it's been quite a, an interesting reaction on, on social media from Norwich fans and maybe some querying why the club would, would allow him to leave permanently. I mean, what, what do you make of, of this? It feels like maybe 
more of a recognition towards Kellen Fisher, who's really pushed on in pre-season, I think, as we touched about in a, in a previous podcast. Yeah, I think Kellen Fisher's been probably one of the most underrated and sort of highest performers in the whole of the pre-season so far, probably behind Jack Stacey, which is uh, typical that they both play the same position. But, yeah, I think there was probably a hype around Barley Mumba, of course, young player of the year in League One last year season, and he had a great year at Plymouth playing in a wing-back role, and, of course, that's just not the system that David Wagner plays, and... I think defensively we can see sort of the frailties in his game. Of course, only 22 years of age still at the moment, but certainly someone who's better from an attacking perspective than defensive. And I think in a David Wagner sort of system, it, it probably you do have to be quite good in the defensive standpoint. So um, yeah, I can understand the reasoning. I think it's uh, it's not. Yeah, I think it's one I'd hope to have maybe gone out on loan. Uh, Sin only got on in, in you know Plymouth in the Championship, and then maybe next season when you, know, you never know in football. You know, it's so fluid that Norwich could have a different manager who does play a wing back system. And if Barley Mumbas had a great season at Plymouth on loan, then he could come back and play you know a pivotal role in in a Norwich City side. But um, at the current you know current moment in time, he's probably not going to get much football. And he's a man who, who's 22, and I think we've all said about Adam Eady. You know, he's, he's maybe the one sort of downfall in his game is that he's never really played enough football. And if Barley Mumba's not going to get that here, then he's probably, you know, in his uh, interest to go and find that. And he had a great spell at Plymouth. He's obviously got lots of friends down that area now and enjoyed his time there. So it all makes sense. Norwich have some funds now to reinvest, hopefully in some areas that maybe they need more players in. Um, but also, I think, yeah, it's a huge plus as well for Callum Fisher to come up from Bromley. And he could potentially now be in a matchday squad in the championship. And I think he's deserved that on merit from his performances so far in in pre-season so excited to see what's you know what's going to come from him and obviously wish Barley Mumba all the best because uh, I'd have liked to have seen it worked out here for him but um, sometimes you know systems managers and players it doesn't always you know have the same uh, sort of result as what fans would maybe like yeah it's just uh, just a wrong time I know we've only got you for, for a few more minutes Darren but um, just to get your thoughts on, on Barley Mumba it's a young player of the year in League One last season involved in a title winning League One side I think maybe some fans concerns are if you can't get a player who's shown that potential, still very, very young into the Norwich City team, given what the model has been, then I, I, it, it maybe doesn't. It maybe I guess contradicts what they were trying to do in the past with trying to bring young players in. So what, what do you make of him potentially leaving? Is it a case, as Adam said there, of him maybe not quite being the right fit for this moment in, in time and maybe even in pre-season perhaps not showing what, what he needed to show? Yeah, I'm sure there's all sorts of factors, really. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed, to be honest. I think he's um, he certainly is a player that can progress and has proved himself this season. I think if you were, if he wasn't at our football club and was on playing for Plymouth and you looked at him, you'd think he'd actually be a decent signing for Norwich, you know. So, um, but you don't know what he's thinking himself. That, you know, is he kind of not forced to move, but he wants to get away so he is playing regular football. And I think Norwich sometimes are very honest in that. If you're not going to get the minutes you need and you want, they're quite happy to move you on and get some funds to spend elsewhere. But I'll be sad to see him go. But but again, you know, League One is very, very different to the Championship. But, but he had a great season. Um, it's surprising to see someone move on who seems to be progressing um, that you lose. But, but, you know, as you say, is it a case of, you know, his piece of the jigsaw doesn't fit in the jigsaw puzzle of Norwich City at the moment in the way they're doing things? So, um you know, we'll move on. It'll, it'll come down to the start of the season again. You start the season well and, 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 and everybody's in good form, then it gets forgotten about quite quickly. But, you know, those those decisions get brought up again if, you know, you don't start the season too well and particularly a left-back position is somewhere where you seem to be struggling. So, you know, that's the difficult decisions the management team and, and the technical team behind the scenes have to make. Um, but I'm sure that Barley wanted to play week in, week out, football regularly, and he's going to a place where he's played before. So, um Good luck to the lads, you know, and, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him progress. Um, um, perhaps back here again the season after. Yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, just finally then, Darren, because we know you've got to go and speak to Stephen Fry at the official opener. There's lots of people here, I'm sure, who, who will be uh, really excited to chat with you. Just give us your, your feelings going into to the season. I think you've kind of hinted at them throughout the show so far, but how, how are you feeling about the, the new campaign? It's going to be feels like it's going to be maybe tough or perhaps even tougher than the last season was in parts. Look, I'm always optimistic going into a new season, even as a player. Um, you know, you're excited to see new signings and how they fit in. I think the fans feel the same way. I think I think the supporters can see what Norwich are trying to do in terms of the players they're adding. That might not happen within the first season of that. You know, to, to, to change a DNA within a football club in the way you play can take two or three seasons. You can't do that overnight. But I think they've made big strides in terms of the signings they've made. Um, but you never know. The championship's a funny old thing. Did you expect Luton to get promoted? No, we didn't. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Norwich back up there again next season. 
And the good thing about Norwich as well and, and, and the, the, the staff behind the club, if Norwich have a good start to the season, they progress and they come to Christmas time, they're in and around it, oh, Norwich will invest again. They will bring people in to try and kick on again. So I don't have any danger, but the, the concern is obviously those first dozen games where we're sat after that because if things aren't going well, David Wagner's only on a year contract. Would they lend to look and move him on? But, you know, Stuart Webber's obviously leaving in the next season. So all these things are going to happen over the next season or so. It's going to be a really interesting season on and off the pitch. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. Darren, thank you very much for, for your time. We're going to come back in a little while with a, a part two of the show. But it's been fantastic to be here at the Lion and Castle. Like we said, it's going to be open for supporters in the Lower Barclay on match days. Get yourself in here. It's already a really nice atmosphere as it's, uh, as it's filled up. And it's going to be a great place to socialise before, uh, before games this season. So get yourself down here. Thank you to Darren. And we'll be back for part two in just a minute. Caring for others is the greatest privilege that we could have. If we couldn't do that, then I think we'd be in the wrong profession. It's a job that when you start, you never want to leave and you can go home knowing that you've made a difference to someone else at night. That means a visit by someone. As I say, they're, they're not my carers, they're my friends. It's just so rewarding to go home and know that just because I've been there for a little while, I've made a difference to their life and made an impact. Part two of the podcast uh, brings us out here. We're at Carrow Road, pitch size. You can see it looks in lovely condition. Uh, Norwich obviously here against Olympiacos in a week and then uh, a couple of weeks later for the championship opener at Hull. You would have seen the first part of this pod with Darren Eady. We're in the Lion and Castle and I'm delighted to be joined by Cameron to my right and Ben to my left who played a pretty integral role in getting that open. So Cameron, let's, um, let's talk to you first. Just talk to me a little bit about your role and the, the part that you played in, in the Lion and the Castle. Well, within the role of working with Longcombe Norwich to kind of develop the idea for the pub. One of the things we were asked to do was think about potential names. Um, so we kind of threw a few about within the WhatsApp group that we've got. Uh, one of the suggestions I had was Lion and Castle. The reason for that is fairly obviously it's on the badge and it's been really been important part of the badge, has been since the 70s, but there's also that wide links of community, which is something the club wanted. So we thought that would be a really good fit, especially because it has that kind of sound of a traditional pub name. We put it forward to the, um, to the club and the people within the club really enjoyed it and really liked it. So that is now the name of the new Bartley pub. What were some of the rejected ones? Can you can you tell us? Uh, I can't remember many of them. We we thought about going for yellows, but that was taken. Yeah, yeah. Um, we thought something greens. You could greens, yeah. <laughs> strikers. I think there's a um, the old pub in the River End used to be called Strikers, but again, seemed a bit generic. Same with Canary. There's a lot of things in the city with Canary. Also, Fat Cat Canary down the road is its own fantastic pub. So we didn't want to steal there thunder either we wanted something that was a bit more unique yeah and, it's, and it certainly is that and Ben you were um, you, you were tasked with creating that mural that we saw in the first half that we recorded yep. um, some iconic moments in there just yep. talk to us about what it was like to make that how hard a process was it how long did it take it was really good fun it took a while we had a bit of a, a chat amongst the Alonkham Norwich WhatsApp group what are the iconic uh, Barclay end moments. Um, I didn't want to do just another sort of best players, best goals, because we've all seen those quite a lot. I wanted to do something that was quite um, just those those real sort of like fan fan moments that people remember. Things like you know Gunny running down towards the Barclay end, about to headbutt the crossbar, things like that. Um, so yeah, it was really good fun. Really enjoyed it. What is it like when you? Uh, I'm guessing you produce these things on a computer. So yeah, when, yeah. when it goes from computer to seeing it on the wall, or you know, I know you've done some of the Barclay. Yeah. Uh, what they call waivers, waivers. Yes, that's right. yeah, yeah. So what's it like for you to go from computer to seeing it? It must be really proud, yeah, it's, really it's, pride, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a thrill. It's uh, yeah, it never stops being <laughs> being incredibly thrilling to see see something you've designed being being here in the ground, either on a flag or on a wall. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you guys are both Norwich fans, so I'll ask you how are you. How, let's start with you, Ben. First and foremost, how are you feeling about the the new season? <laughs> well. Not overly optimistic. I think we're looking quite solid defensively. Maybe not quite so exciting going forward. Um, so yeah, maybe mid-table fighting for playoffs again, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think a lot of people would take that actually. Certainly the the latter end of it. Maybe yeah. not the mid-table <laughs> element. Uh, Cameron, what about you? How are you feeling? Well, I think any football fan knows that pessimism is a powerful tool. So if I set my expectations low, either I'm proven right or I'm pleasantly surprised. <laughs> so I think that's where I'll go, and I'm I'm happy to just see how we do and. Sort of, I think the division. What it's going to be? It's going to be a strong division. But in terms of the teams in it, there's lots that I'm looking forward to playing, going away to, and 
I think just on that side, more of the off the pitch, and on, I'm, I'm looking forward to it on that level. Good stuff, gents. Thank you very much. We're going to have a bit of a rotation, and we're going to bring in a couple of your Along Come Norwich colleagues. I don't know which two of you want to come in, or all three. It's up to you. I don't mind. Uh, and I think we're going to be joined by John Punt and Tom Parsley for the next bit, who have also played a key role in said pub that we've uh, that we've been discussing. Well, Tom didn't. didn't Punt did. Did. <laughs> and, uh, and Nick is on the end as well, which is uh, which is good. Hello, guys. I have to squeeze in to all getting shot. Um, John, let's let's start with you. Just talk to us about the role you've you've played in the creation of the Lion and Castle, and I guess pride is probably the the feeling for you after all those weeks and months of work. Yeah, it looks brilliant, and I think the main thing that the club uh, and Delia actually and her team were really keen to stress is like this is a place for the fans. They wanted to make it a place that actually was really welcoming and could be multi-purpose and multi-use, and you see it today. Like it absolutely is that. I mean, you know the. I think the last time the Russell Allison Lounge was fitted out was probably 1990s. It wasn't fit for purpose anymore. So they, they talked to us about it. They talked about what the space should look like. They were really keen to talk about the food offering, the beer offering, but also to give us a bit of space. And you've just talked to Ben about it, you know, about the, the fantastic mural that he's organised with um, with Nasha Murals, who've just done the Justin Fashion one as well at the pub, um, Fat Cat and Canary. And so we're incredibly grateful that they've given up um, you know that space for essentially what is just a, a small fan group. Yes, absolutely. Um, Tom, let's let's come to you on the football then. It feels like we should talk about Barley Mumble because we spoke about it a bit in the first half with Darren, but it's subsequently been confirmed whilst we're here. He's, he's uh, left to join Plymouth. What are your thoughts, feelings on, on, on that particular move? Disappointment because he was one that you felt the fans already had quite a connection with despite the relatively short amount of minutes he's played on the pitch. Also, whenever you've seen someone achieve something over a, uh, a body of work of a season, i.e. You know, League One was a young player of the season in League One, and you think, well, surely that's someone we should want to be investing in. Likewise, for the, for the money, what, what we're hearing is that it's not much north of a million, so therefore you think, really? Is, did we need one million so much that we would give up someone with such future promise who if he were to replicate that form over the course of a championship season, could be worth a lot more than that than, than he is right now. So maybe he wanted to go. He had a great time there, um, you know, achieving promotion with them. It's going to be, yeah, it's, it, it's sad to see someone like that go when you don't really feel like we needed to sell. We were told we didn't need to sell, especially for such a small amount of money. So, yeah, diff difficult one to kind of understand. So hopefully there'll be some, some comms that come out around, look, he loved the area, he really wanted to get, you know, maybe they need to do a bit of PR around that. Yeah, we, we shall see in due course. I mean, Nick, I'm going to come to you. Uh, it does feel like there's been a little bit of a lull in transfer activity, which I think has caused some concern for supporters. Where, where are you feeling at the moment in terms of what this Norwich City squad looks like heading into the new season? Yeah, well, um, I've actually got my thoughts in a certain national uh, football magazine at the moment this month, so if anybody wants to buy that. Is it, is it one that's named after a formation? It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you want to read that, that's great. I, I, I'm quite a classic Norwich fan, as I like to try and try and involve myself in as much pessimism as possible as the <laughs> following season. Um, I'm a bit worried that we haven't got a proper sort of on-fire striker, um, which I think is, a, is something that we've had for the last few successful seasons that we've had at this level. Um, and also just, but generally, I, I, you know, in terms of transfer activity, we are in a position as a club where there are teams in the championship that are spending ridiculous amounts of money on players who are probably not worth the money that they're being paid for. And, Unfortunately, we just we just can't compete with that, and um, whether it, whether it's you know the, the the fault of our transfer activity or the fault of football, I don't know. But it's 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 probably going to be a situation where we're going to get left behind if we're not if we're not careful. Um, so yeah, I'm not particularly optimistic about this season, and if if we are having a good season, we get promoted. I don't know if we'll be optimistic about that either. You know, and that's the unfortunate situation we find ourselves in. Um, sorry, I know that's not particularly optimistic. Come on, John, give me some optimism. <laughs> I mean, I just said to you in the pub, didn't I, that I thought a, a 12th place finish was probably where, whereabouts I saw us. The only crumb of optimism that I, I cling to is that Norwich never, ever spend money well. Like, where, when could you demonstrably see that, that Norwich have spent money, you know, or decent money well, apart from maybe you're going back to someone like Dean Ashton, possibly Robert Earnshaw? So the fact that we've got no money actually maybe leads me to believe that 
you know, we might unearth a, another Emi Buendia or Tim Krul or Tammy Puki or Grant Holt or whoever it might be, and we might get on a run. Um, I'd just like to see a little bit more at the other end, you know, the attacking output. And I think that's the issue that, that Ben was just talking about, that we've identified that that, that think, is a concern right now. I think what I would say, I, I know I was painting a bit of a pessimistic picture, but I think the signs we have made are, are pretty decent. It's just then they're not particularly... You know, if you want to go up and you want to then stay up in the Premier League, they're not those sort of signings. And I don't think they're, they are the sort of signings that we could then make. But for our sort of level of being able, of, of transfer activity, there are actually really good signings, I think. And it, 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 they're, they're signings that we actually, we needed a bit of what they provide us as well. So a little bit of that sort of needle and a little bit of that sort of um, gamesmanship. Um, so I think they actually have been pretty good signings, but um, they're not going to set the world alight. Let's put it that way, as, as kind of like, we're not good, we're, we haven't signed an Emmy Buendia, as, as, as John says. <laughs> what, what more do Norwich need to do, Tom? In, in terms of the, the summer and their transfer activity, what areas are you looking at of the squad and feeling that there needs to be some sort of solution or addition brought in? It sounds like such a broken record thing to say, but it's midfield again. Mm. Um, we, you know, from a defensive midfield point of view or an attacking midfield point of view, you either have to completely unleash Nunez to be able to just live his best life and have the most fun and not have any responsibilities. I don't think he works in a two up and down. Um, or you have to say, likewise to Sarri, you know, you're going to be the guy that can do whatever you want. I think, I think we needed to strengthen in that area and there's still time, but I, th I think we do need one more. I don't think we can just go with what we had. I just think that seems crazy. The, the one thing we were talking about earlier, which is, you know, you can't rely on this, but I almost feel like we need to take us from that mid-table expectation that I think we've got to the to the playoff expectation. We almost need, a, a, you know, a, a Johnny Rowe or a Liam Gibbs or someone like that to have a, a Josh Murphy, Jacob Murphy style season, where all of a sudden we've unearthed a star. We didn't realize, or, or Max Aarons when you know when prior to that Ipswich run out, no one was suggesting that he would one go on to be a ph phenomenal servant for the club or or even play a big role in that season. If there is someone like Johnny Rowe or Liam Gibbs that becomes kind of a youth player that, that really steps up and all of a sudden, oh my goodness me, we've got something here that, and, and you know, contributes with, with 10 goals and kind of eight assists or something like that, it feels like it's going to have to come from there. I agree with Nick. We've, we have made really solid upper mid-table championship signings. You know, and I think many teams that will end up finishing below that will be jealous of the likes of a Duffy, the likes of a Barnes. You know, you know Stacey looks fantastic in, in pre-season. You know, we have made some really solid signings that, that I think we're going to get reliable, top-level championship output from. But that spark, it's, I don't think we've got it. And that defensive, reliable steal in midfield, again, I don't think we've got it. I feel we've got to get, we've got to get the formation right to find a way of what's working. Or we need one of those young lads to really take that step on and become, like for example, it'd be brilliant if it was Liam Gibbs for, for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, It'd be brilliant if it was him that went, do you know what, actually, I've made a huge step forward and I'm ready to be a you know, top-class championship midfield. If that happened this season, that could be what we need to make those few positions difference to make it end up in a playoff run. Absolutely. John, I'm going to give the, the final word to you because we, we speak to lots of fans and we, we have done in Germany and uh, some who are in the Netherlands and I'm sure we will when we, when we go to Austria as well. Um, you know, you're just taking stock of the general fan feeling, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of excitement around in, 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 towards the new season. Is that something that you feel is, is fair? And if so, how do the, the club, I, I guess it, a lot of it is going to be sort of based on transfer activity, right? But how do they increase that excitement ahead of the new season amongst their, their own fan base at the moment? I think it's goals at the moment, isn't it? Like we haven't seen that in pre-season with the exception of Kings Lynn. We haven't looked like we're going to create a bucket load of chances. And it does feel like if you can tag on that extra winger or, you know, like I go back to last season when we were successful under David Wagner, it's probably Kieran Dowell that was, mm -hmm. Kieran Dowell that was unlocking the door. We haven't got that type of player. Maybe, as Tom says, like Nunez, you know, a bit further forward may be able to do that for us. But I think to get bums off seats, you need to be scoring goals. You need to be playing, you know, kind of front foot football. And it feels like Wagner style might be a little bit more reactive. And there might need to be a shift in expectation and a shift in, into what we see in front of our eyes at Carrow Road. Um, and that, I, I don't. I don't necessarily think there's a sense of apathy. I just think there's maybe a sense of acceptance that this might be our lot at the moment. And actually, look, we've just said, we've made a lot of really solid championship signings which should be able to add value at this level. Yes, there are three or four exceptional clubs who are going to spend a lot of money, 
But actually, beyond that, is there much in this division? Perhaps not. If we get on a run, you know, we could easily be fourth, fifth, sixth, and that will, that will be qualified as a success for Norwich. Good stuff. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, John. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Cameron. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Adam. And thank you to you for watching. And listen, I think this is the most people we've ever had on a podcast ever. So uh, it's, uh, it's been good to, to hear lots of different opinions. We'll, of course, be in Austria next week for the Toulouse game. And then we'll be back here next Saturday um, or a week on Saturday for Olympiacos, which is going to be fascinating before it all begins again. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you again very soon.